This is the first video on a D&D speed training series I'm doing to speed up your game in a lot of different ways. My patrons voted and first up is my quick homebrew initiative system that I call Skirmish Initiative. Here's how it works. At your game table, you know those times when you're describing something. Tension's building and there's about to be something that happens or it happens out of nowhere and that roll for initiative moment is coming. But instead of everyone having to stop roll for initiative, get everybody in order and have the whole combat happen, bring out the game board, bring out the minis, take all this extra time. We don't have time. We're going right into it with this fast style and everybody says what they do all at once and you as the dungeon master also jump into this chaos and say what the bad guys are doing and everybody all at once in this hectic storm says what they do time out if you think i'm crazy then let me say this is very situational and this is not a global default initiative system that i use all the time i could do a whole nother video on how i personally run initiative but i do not do this all the time, but only in specific situations where I want this certain feel of chaos and skirmish quick battle to get across. So right now I'm gonna give you an example from my game table and we're gonna get into when you should or should not use this system and give a bunch of variations so you can customize this thing to what feels right for your table. Here's the example. The group is hunting down a suspicious figure that they saw making some kind of deal in the streets of the city. They follow this individual down through the winding alleyways towards the outer walls of the city. This section of town is broken down and in shambles. The part Party manages to track down this hooded figure as he slinks into an abandoned tower with a strange purple glow at the top. They enter through the broken stone doorway into a large circular room with an open air staircase they can see all the way to the top. But in the center lies a prone, face down, unmoving body. Time out. A couple quick DM tips here and what's actually going on with this whole thing. Whenever you're describing this, this, this stalking type, there's a different feel at the table for these different types of situations where you might want to use something like this. And there's a tension, pacing, mood, lots of different stuff to think about here. But there's falling after this figure. There's a sense of unknown in the air. They don't know what's about to happen. And right now, everything's kind of chill. They're sneakily going through here, but nothing's going bad. Nothing's crazy yet. Another bonus tip is when you describe the room, I definitely would not describe the body in the middle of the room first. Describe some general things here, especially if you're going to about to go theater in the mind and there's a combat coming. This is very important because I know right now a combat's about to go down in the middle of this thing. They need to have a sense of what's going on so they're not so confused and I can keep things rolling because they understand where they're at. If I say there's a body in the floor, they're not going to hear the spiral open staircase, the general things about it. So I'm going to make sure if I know I'm about to throw them <laughs> into the fire, I give them a general sense of maybe be a little more descriptive than usual of what their room looks like. So let me tell you right now what's about to happen. There's a ritual demon circle going on by some cultists in the very top of this tower, the purple glow. But they have hired bandit type assassins to help protect them and stop anyone from interrupting the ritual. So the players don't know it yet, but right now they're about to get ambushed by these assassin bandits hiding in the tops of the stairs. And as soon as this whole thing starts, one of the bandits is going to race upstairs to alert the cultists. And what's that body in the middle of the floor? It could be a number of things. It's somebody that came in here and and the front of the body is riddled with arrows as somebody starts to look at it. Maybe it's a person that had their heart cut out for part of the ritual that's happening upstairs. But now, let's get back to it. The players now have free reign to explore this room in whatever ways that they want. But whoever looks up first or whoever inspects the body first is going to trigger this entire event. Two arrows get launched as part of the surprise round, which might look something like this. You go to inspect this body and you grab the shoulder to flip the body over, seeing that there's a huge laceration on the chest with an empty opening. But before you have time to see anything else, an arrow lodges into your shoulder and another one lands next to you. The rest of you see those two arrows shoot from the top of the spiral staircase as you see two hooded figures with bows drawn. You see one of the two of them yell out, warn the master, we have company. A third figure starts sprinting up the stairs. What do you do? Boom, there you go. Combat started. Like right now, combat started. There is no minis. There's no reveal of a game board. There's no asking for initiative. All those things, they are live right now. And if I ask them what they do and there's any hesitation or pauses and moments, that person's sprinting up the stairs to alert the cultists. I will shoot them with two more arrows. And if you've never done this to your players before, they'll get the picture and start to pick up whenever these type of situations happen and it'll really ramp up the tension. I love moments like this whenever I can give my players the same experience that is currently going on with their character. And they're actually synced up in this moment of a frantic, I don't know what to do. I, can, I, I don't know. What spells do I have? What cooldowns do I do? What are you going to do? It doesn't matter. Go. Now, these are structured like normal rounds and each person, good and bad guys, get only one turn each round. But if there's any hesitation, pauses, or lulls, that's a player missing their turn and they're going to get fired on again. Timeout. And I literally mean a timeout in this way because things can get a little crazy. You have to be able to control the pace of this crazy, fast-paced combat 
for your players. Whenever you first start this off with them, don't be too mean and just keep firing arrows at them and you as you like yell at them across the table. Don't have it be that crazy of an experience. Make sure you feel the room and help them whenever they actually need it so that they're not just completely paralyzed. But a lot of this stuff's gonna be going on at the same time. As soon as somebody says what they're gonna do, ask them for a roll, they do it. What are you doing? As they're making the roll and adding up the number and they're doing it, it's all happening at the same time. This is also a great time to bring some sand timers out and really escalate the situation. And as soon as that sand timer reaches the bottom, the bandit gets to the top and alerts the cultists or whatever. And then with sand timers, I don't always tell them what happens at the end of the sand timer. I have a one minute sand timer, a 30 second, a five minute, stuff like that. There's a bunch of different ones you can, you can easily buy. I have an Amazon shop link down in the description. But I don't always tell them what happens. Sometimes I like to leave it being ominous and sometimes it's pretty obvious what would happen or other times I might tell them as soon as, before I flip it over, as soon as this thing goes out, they alert the cultists. Boom, you slam it on the table. Whew, okay. So now we're gonna get into when do you actually use these fixes for some issues that can come up whenever you run something so so crazy like this and some more options to again personalize it to your group. So the first thing here is when do the bad guys go? Do you establish a certain order and then everybody always goes in that order? You could do it like that, but that's a little bit too structured for me in this chaos. I, it, people are just going and the orders will change from round to round. So maybe in this example, two players immediately jump into action, start spraying up the stairs, doing whatever they're doing. And if there's any hesitation, that's whenever I take the bad guys turn and they go and do their thing, which does give a little extra time to the those other players that weren't as quick to think. They then say what they do, and once everyone's done one thing, the next round starts. And people pick up on this pretty quickly because just like in normal combat, everybody gets to do one turn per round. But what if two things happen at the same time or in direct opposition of each other? Well, in general, this is fine because in the rules of D&D, there's already something called contests where you make a contest to see whoever rolls higher. So if it's an attack roll, whoever rolled higher hits first. If two people are running towards the same thing, they both make an initiative check and they just do a flat dexterity roll to see who gets their first. But if these contests aren't enough and you say you do something as the dungeon master and one of the bad guys is doing something and a player wants to do a spell first because they see that happening, these types of things can happen and you don't want to say, no, I said it first. <laughs> don't get into that game. That doesn't feel good. But what you can do is have a roll off in that one little moment. Have a mini roll off between those two players to actually see who gets to do the thing they said first. Now, if you're worried about this happening too much and then too many people are trying to do the same thing and you keep having these little mini initiative roll offs all the time and it slows down things, down that usually doesn't happen because as things are going fast it kind of makes sense and there's a feel of the table of what is fair and what makes sense for who goes first but another way you can do this if you don't have to handle rolling is just your initiative score wins and whatever your actual initiative score is in your box whatever that number is is if you beat the other person or not so when you say you do something faster than the other what's your initiative score five there's is four you go first it's so fast or another way you can do this i personally don't do this but i've heard of somebody have this homebrew of something of my Mine is have everyone also roll for initiative at the beginning anyway. You still run things off really fast paced in this skirmish initiative system, but anytime there is a contest of who would go first, you refer to the initiative score that was rolled for this combat. But I personally don't like that because I really do like to throw them in, give them no time, no rolling for initiative, and they are in the battle now. Another method that can do something really similar but has a little bit more structure to it mechanically is called a one round skill challenge. This is one of my favorite homebrews that I made up based off of skill challenges from 4th edition. I've taken those and condensed them into one round. I've already done a full video on this that will be in the description, but basically everyone around the table goes around and makes a skill check and they say what they're going to do to try and fix this problem in the moment. Nobody can make the exact same check, so you got to stay creative and not overlap. And there's a certain DC that's set, and once everybody rolls against it, you see how many successes versus failures you have. So really quickly, in a flash of a moment as everybody's doing this, you can see if they succeed and stop the person or not. Or here's another thing. You can structure this a little bit more. If you like this back and forth style of it not being the same thing every single round and being a little bit more predictable. If you want to dial up the unpredictability in an entire initiative system that you can use for any type of fight, not just these fast paced ones, I got something for you. Luke Hart over at the DMs Layer is a close friend of mine and fellow content creator, and he has an entire homebrew initiative system that I have tried out and I love. I, of course, taken and ran with it in my own way and made my own tweaks to it, but it is a great system. I'll have that video linked down in the description as well. And there's 
going to be a lot more collaborations coming from me and Luke here soon. We got a video coming out here soon together, and we got some stuff happening on Patreon together too. Lots of big stuff coming on that. But if you guys do want to see my own personal initiative system or my version of Luke's initiative system, they're really the two main ones I use and the options that I give to my table. And in all my games, no matter how I run them, I might throw this skirmish initiative system at them to make them kind of scramble and see how the group likes it. And based on how they liked it is if I'll use it more or less. And I also, of course, love throwing in skill challenges and those one round skill challenges. This is my first video on the Dungeon Coach speed training series. So I hope this gives you guys a lot of tools to help take your game to the next level. And if you want more tools in the form of PDFs, every single month, I give you guys a bunch of cool stuff over on my Patreon. I have three different PDFs I make every single month that I put in different award tiers. You can pick and choose what you want. And the support helps me put back into this channel and make even more stuff for you guys. I started making two videos a week now, and it really has helped make that happen. And some new people helping this happen is the new Gold Dragon patron, Dasterly. Big shout out for just jumping into the channel support in this big way. I super appreciate it. And I also have another thank you for two people that have been patrons for one full year now. Dark Abyss Keeper and Mark M. It's crazy that these two are now, it's been a full year since they've been a part of this because they help the channel in more than just being supportive. It's also crazy to see these two specific names come up as a one full year patron member because it's not just supporting the channel in that way. They support the channel in a lot of different ways. Dark Abyss Keeper is on the homebrew council that helps sculpt and define these PDFs. He was actually was one of the people that helped and fire up and churn back and forth with me on Draken Harbor, that full city PDF we did. And Mark M is the literal guy that makes and edits the PDFs that I send them. There is no way that I could do that. And if I did, it'd basically just be a Word document that nobody would really want. He makes them look real pretty and both of them are huge. So a big thank you goes out to them and everyone else that supports literally make this 